In this video, we're talking about cores and threads. We're going to be explaining what they are and how they work inside of your computer. And this video is specifically for video editors, designers, and photographers. If you're new to the channel, I'm Benji Kaiser, and you're watching Don't Tech With Me, the place where you're going to get the latest tech news and tech terms demystified for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Like I said, right now, we're talking about cores and threads. And we're going to explain cores threads, and then how they work together and what you need for your computer, whether you're a video editor, graphic designer, photographer, whatever it might be in the creative space. I'm going to jump on over here. What are cores? That's where we're going to start. Well, cores are basically CPUs on a CPU. So up until 2005, cores did not exist. It was one processor with technically one core on it because it was computing the information, but they did not have multiple cores as we know it today. During that time, manufacturers were trying to figure out how to get more performance out of their computers. So they thought first, well, let's just add more CPUs to a motherboard, but that was expensive and took up a lot of room. So then they thought, okay, well, let's go into the CPU and add more cores. This will allow us to get more performance out of the computer, which is when we first saw a dual core processor. Now, we also know that processors have a certain clock speed. This clock speed is what allows them to execute their tasks. So they fetch information, decode it, and then execute, aka deliver information to different components inside of the computer to then tell them what to do. So the clock speed is, is the speed in which a processor can do that. Now, if you have a singular core at 1.4 gigahertz, then you have a 1.4 single core gigahertz processor. As you add cores to the processor, you are going to have each core in that processor capable of reaching those speeds. So it's not that the entire processor overall has a core speed of 2.2 gigahertz, 2.0 gigahertz. It's that each core in that processor can reach 2.0 gigahertz. Now, as you are working, let's say in Photoshop, so you open up Photoshop and you begin to work, you are going to call upon one of your cores. If you have a four core, eight thread processor, and we'll talk more about threads in a minute. You're going to call upon one of your cores to open up and start a process. And then Photoshop is going to run on that core. And every time you work on, a, on your project and you're doing different tasks and you know working on things and doing your brush and whatever it might be, masking, your processor is going to be utilizing that core. Now let's say you open Spotify. Okay, so you have four processors. Right now one's taken. So Spotify is going to take that other processor. And then you want to open a web browser. So there's another processor taken. And then you want to do a quick edit in Premiere Pro. There's another processor taken. So if you have four cores, then you can delineate the power across those four cores and you're not going to be bottlenecking your CPU. So having multiple cores is very important. Don't just look at the amount of gigahertz or the clock speed of your computer because a two core processor at say 2.0 gigahertz is going to be slower than a four core processor at 4.0 gigahertz. Now there are exceptions uh, cert in, in certain ways and we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. But that's the understanding of cores. Let's jump into threads. So what are threads? Well threads are bas basically virtual cores. So threads are a series of programmed instructions that allow a CPU core to appear to be split into two cores. So for each core, you have two threads. So two cores, four threads, four cores, eight threads, six cores, 12 threads. And now we have all the way up to 32 cores and 64 threads. So threads were a technology that allowed the physical core, the processor that's in the computer, to appear as two cores to the computer system. So now we have even more capability of delineating the power across the different cores when we start a process. So when we open up Google Chrome, when we open up Photoshop, when we open up Premiere Pro, when we open up Spotify, each of those different pr uh, processes will now be able to be run on a core or a thread or you know having a core split into threads so you're going to get more performance your computer is going to not get as bogged down that's why having more cores and threads can be very very lucrative or very efficient when doing multi when multitasking now if you're only gaming or you know you're only running premiere pro then in a sense those other eight cores let's say oh excuse me those other seven cores, if you have an eight core processor, are really not doing much. They're kind of sitting idle waiting for something to do. So if you're like only running Photoshop, well then you want to have a maybe a four to six core processor with a ton of power rather than say maybe like an eight or 12 core processor with a lower clock speed. Now, as you get 
up into more cores and threads, the clock speeds are going to boost just because that's where more technology is invested and more money is invested in making those processors faster. But I digress, let's let's keep moving forward. If you're not, I hope you're understanding this so far. Definitely comment below if there needs to be any clarification. I definitely want you guys to have all the information that you need on this cores and threads explained. So we'll keep moving forward here. So what is clock speed? We mentioned clock speed really quickly, but let's just go over it once more before we move forward. Programs require the CPU to continually complete calculations in order to run. If you have a higher clock speed, you can compute these calculations quicker and applications will run faster and smoother as a result. I'm gonna have a full video dedicated to clock speed, so you're definitely gonna wanna subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on that video. But that's basically clock speed in a nutshell. So let's talk about this. As far as clock speed, threads, cores, and all that are concerned, you basically just multiply the clock speed by the cores and the threads, right? And then you have your, your overall CPU performance. It's that easy. Well, it's not because that's not how the system manages the cores and the threads. So let's take the i7-10750H with six cores, 12 threads at a base clock. That means like a consistent clock that it can hit without overheating and really running smoothly at 2.6 gigahertz. That can boost up to 4.2 gigahertz in turbo mode. Now when it goes up to turbo mode, um, it can only hang there for so long before it really starts to heat up and then the processor has to either throttle back or the fans really have to kick on to cool that processor. So really that's more of a, it's not really a marketing term, I mean it kind of is, but computers can't sit that high. You're not going to get that amount of performance for that long. It's going to eventually throttle back. Anyway, I digress. Modest assessment of what we can get out of this processor, if we do the multiplication table, is 42 gigahertz out of this processor, which is false. That's not what is going to happen. And as the Grinch would say, wrong -o. That's that's not it's not how it works. So let's talk about how this works. Let's talk about how cores and threads worked together. Okay. Here's an example of how I've been able to explain it and it's been working really well. Take two robots, that is a two core processor without threads, okay? These two robots are in charge of, looks like analyzing this, uh, this car body as it's going through the factory. So they can accomplish this, tasks, this task in a set amount of time according to the amount of clock speed that they are given. So if they are given a, let's say a 2.0 gigahertz clock speed, then they'll be able to move at a certain speed, which means these two cores are going to be able to complete this car body analysis in X amount of time. Okay. Now let's move on to a six core processor. This six core processor, let's say these six robots will now be able to complete this analysis in a much quicker time frame, because there are now six robots attributed to this specific project or to this specific com computational task, these calculations. So obviously six robots are going to be faster than two robots, okay? So, but let me tell you, if these two robots have a clock speed of say four gigahertz, and these six robots have a clock speed of 1.2 gigahertz, then this technically would be a faster processor. Now, there's definitely some, some things that may happen that might get bottlenecked because you have multiple programs open, but if you're talking about specifically maybe you just working in Premiere Pro and Photoshop, then this processor will be faster because you're only utilizing those two cores. Whereas if you're working in many more programs, then this processor indeed might be faster because you're going to end up bottlenecking because it's trying to share the cores and it could put a hard toll on the system. You may not be able to complete those tasks as fast as you hoped. All right, now let's go for the king of all, and that would be a multiple core, multiple threaded processor. So if you have, let's say, I can't even count how many robots are here, but let's just say this is an eight core, 16 thread processor. You have multiple robots with multiple robots assisting those robots. So basically the core is the main operator. The core is the one working on the body. And the thread is the assistant who's handing him parts or handing him calculations or handing him information that he needs to do his job faster. So you have the core, which is the main arm, and then you have the helper robots, 
which are the threads, which are assisting that robot with what he needs. So the cores and the threads work together as one to do a task more efficiently. If you only have four cores and four threads, well then it's just a singular core processor doing a task. But if you have it split into two, then you have two people able to assist and work together, or people, robots, two robots able to work together and complete that task faster. And so as you see here, this would be a very efficient process, especially for multitasking. Okay, now there's a little bit more weeds we have to pull through, but let's keep moving forward and talk about it. Most games are created to work on a singular processor, at least pre, you know, the past decade. You know, now more and more game development is working on doing multi-core processor um, games so they can use multi-core and multi -th uh, and hyper-threading. Sorry, I don't want to get too jumbled up. I just want to make sure I get all the information you need and don't take 45 minutes to do it. So things like Premiere Pro, for instance, as well, they don't rely as heavily on multi-cores. They are basically going to be using a singular core with more performance. But what this helps with, if you have, say, an 8-core, 16-thread processor, is if you want to be multitasking, so you want to be working in Premiere Pro, like I said, listening to music, you want to be uh, browsing the internet, editing a, editing a thumbnail in Photoshop, having a multi-core processor is going to give you more performance, and it's not going to slow down that one processor. If you are somebody working on a two or four core processor and you have more than those processes open, what happens is Premiere Pro will slow down because your entire computer is being bogged down because it doesn't have enough processors to attribute individually. So it's going to start to share those. It's going to start to split into those threads and you're going to pull down the performance when you're editing in Premiere Pro, say for instance. So multitasking is really important for multiple cores and threads. Like I said, if you're just using Premiere Pro, you're going to be fine with say four to six cores that have a good core clock speed. Um, that's, that's important. Let's keep moving here though. I want to make sure we get to the recommendations on how many cores and threads for creators. So two cores and four threads, I would honestly avoid. I would not go for this. Maybe, maybe, maybe if you are, you know, doing some light, light Photoshop work or, you know, you're just a, you know, a book publisher and, you know, you want to self-publish your books and you want to have InDesign so you can design your own layout. Maybe you could get away with two cores and four threads. Um, but this is a processor I've seen in like MacBook Airs. I've seen it in the old 13-inch MacBook Pros. And I've just heard over and over again, bad performance, just disappointing performance. So that's where I definitely start designers at four cores and eight threads. My highly recommended 2015 MacBook Pro would have this four core eight thread processor. It's fantastic for graphic designers working in Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, and even doing some 1080p video editing. Although it is going to be slower on the export time and slightly uh, a little bit laggy on the playback, it's still going to be a great computer, especially you're going to improve that playback if you have the dedicated GPU. Uh, in that model. Six cores, 12 threads, video editing, 4K, no problem. Um, I've even heard some people getting up into 6K video editing and really having great performance, especially if they complement that good quality CPU with a great GPU, say something like the 1660 Ti or the 2070, 2060, or 2080 uh, NVIDIA RTX GPU. And then eight cores, 16 threads. It's going to be great for 4K video editing, all the way up to 8K video editing. And then 32 cores, 64 threads. Well, basically, you can you can do whatever you want. You can go to the you can go to the moon if you've ever seen Cheech and Chong. All right, that is cores and threads explained. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'd love to continue to further help you improve your knowledge as a creative professional, understanding your tech. And you've been watching Don't Tech with Me, the place where you're going to get the latest tech news and tech terms demystified. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here on the next episode.